all about what is cloud, what makes it special, and what are some of the things that we need to consider if we are thinking about moving to cloud. Now we're ripe for, well, I'm ready, I want to start doing it, how do I move? What are some practical pieces of information? What are the steps that we as Glintech use ourselves to help uh, migrate our clients across from an on-prem to a cloud instance? So these are the, the steps that we use, the five steps that we use. Now this is not just for a migration from you know, on-prem to cloud. It may be that you're starting a new in cloud and we would still recommend these you know, these steps, or if you're uh, merging existing instances, we find that many organizations have a bunch of different JIRA or Confluence instances that, you know, this team has started one and this team has started one over here and you need to migrate them across or merge them across into one instance. We would still say, you know, the first thing to do is assess, then plan, then test, then migrate or move or, or start that, that application and then finally optimize. So we, we never forget to at the end to optimize, go with that best practice. So what does that mean? So the first step to assess would be to investigate to have a look at the pricing differences. There's a cloud calculator that can step you through. We've seen the, the very um, simple, you know, the pricing before, but it may be that you have more users and you're applicable for a reduced rate because of your users. Um, have a look at the security requirements of your organization and see if you are complete, you know, if the applications are compliant to what your requirements are. Again, explore those available apps, make a list of what you've already got on your on-prem and see how many are available on cloud. What are the differences there? Learn about Atlassian Access because Atlassian Access may be important for your organization and make it really simple for you know, enforcing those security permissions, those things. And understand what is going to complicate the upgrade. Have a look at your instance. Is your instance old? Does it need to be upgraded? These types of things. Then you're having a look at planning. And one of the things that we see, uh, one of the pitfalls that we see is organizations think, oh yes, this is gonna be very simple. And they just go ahead, there's, there's little communication, it's not run like a project. And we would, say, we would recommend that this is a big piece, so run it like a project. Make sure the right people are involved right from the beginning. The people who can make the decisions around what needs to happen. Make sure that you're communicating to all the stakeholders, to the people that will be using the systems, those things, because the earlier you can communicate, the earlier you can set your, your team up for success, for make sure that that migration is going to happen as best as possible, as smoothly as possible, and the people understand what is going to happen, what is, how they are going to be, be impacted and, and how you're going to make it really easy for them to migrate across. Whenever there's a change, we know users get um, upset and, and, it, and you know, any change is difficult and disruptive. So what you want to do is communicate and walk your users through this. Um, and you can use our, our help or our experience to help you out in that section as well. In planning, you want to have a look at what's the right migration strategy for you as an, as an organization. So the first question is, what information do you want to migrate? You know, you don't, this is an opportunity to, to start afresh and to only start with the data, with a clean set of data and the data that you need. You may have a confluence instance with a whole lot of spaces, but not all of that information may need to be migrated, uh, migrated across. Could be archived, it could be information that's no longer required, those types of things. Again, and also with JIRA projects. Some of those projects may have been finished. There's no need to migrate them across because they're not going to be used anymore. You could archive them for you know, some sort of purpose later on um, and then start afresh. You could be that some projects, they're, they're, you know, they're mid sprint and maybe it's just easier to start afresh in cloud and not have to complicate things. So that in these planning sessions, you you'd decide what is the information that we want to migrate across? And do we want to move all at once or do we want to do a hybrid? It is possible, you know, to, to have Jira on the cloud and Confluence on the server and still connect them across and they can still talk to each other. And maybe that's easier or maybe you want to start with Confluence because that could be a simpler migration than a Jira migration at first and get your users comfortable with cloud as, as, a, as a solution. 
and do you need to merge existing instances? You know, we see sometimes some, some clients have a server instance and three cloud instances, and what's the right way to, to migrate and merge them across? Because that's, that's going to complicate your migration if you need to, to merge things across as well. And then have a look at how will you provision users in the future? Do you need to have a look, you know, is your existing identity provider solution uh, the right solution? Will that integrate? Do you have an on-prem service that can still connect? All of these things you want to ask yourself in this planning stage. And you may want to have a look at your app migration process. And we'll talk a little bit about that in the next few slides. But, you know, migrating your application or your add-on data, is that going to be straightforward? How much of that data do you need? Those types of things. And then it comes to preparing or testing that actual migration. So you want to prepare your environments for migration. Does the server application require upgrading? Um, you know, there, there needs to be a certain, there, there's a certain limit to, to what version of JIRA you can migrate across the data because they need to be compatible. Do compatible apps also need to be upgraded before actually doing your migration? And then you want to back up and test those backups. So make sure that if the migration does fail, that you've got a very easy path to roll back to and make sure that your users are not impacted at all. Um, and again, if you, and what I usually say is if you haven't tested the backups, you don't have backups because you don't know until you've made sure that you can recover that information, that you can actually recover that information. Now, when it comes to testing, one of the great things is that you, it's, very, it's a very low bar for trialing out this process because you've got a free tier uh, with 10 users or less on the cloud instances. You could also go for a standard or premium tier to check out those features, but with a reduced user count to do a trial migration of the content from your on-prem or your server to cloud. And there's also extended trials. So, you know, today you could start trialing that migration and having a look at what it looks like, what those features look like in cloud, what your data would look like on those instances. When it comes to the actual migration, Atlassian provides a few add-ons that make it uh, a little bit more straightforward for migrating your data across from a server to a, a cloud instance. So there's the Confluence Cloud Migration Assistant, which is an add-on you would install on your server install. And very simply, first you, you connect to your cloud instance, you choose what you wanna migrate, whether it's your user groups, um, how many spaces, those types of things. And here you can choose exactly which spaces you'd like to migrate. As I was mentioning before, this is a good opportunity to not necessarily migrate all your content across. It may be that you only want to start afresh. You want to start with things that you know are clean. And here you can easily select, these are the spaces that we want to move across. And then it offers a really simple migration dashboard to show you the status of the content that's being migrated across. So it allows you to, to manage that from one central place. Having a look at Jira, Jira also has a cloud migration assistant. Now this is something that Glintech helped through the EAP. We helped test with some of our clients so we can help you in this area as well. So what you would do again is you would connect your, your server instance to your cloud instance, you would choose what you want to, uh, what you want to migrate over, your users, those types of things, and then the projects that you would like to migrate across. Having said that, there are a few things that you need to, to know about the migration assistant because Jira is a little bit more of a complicated application. There are things that the Jira migration assistant does not migrate. So certain custom fields, uh, you know, select lists, those types of things. Workflow functions do not come across. Links to issues or entities that are not migrated. As you can see here, there's a whole list of things. When you are migrating across, you need to make sure that your users have a valid and unique 
email address. This is one of the things we see a lot when we're doing these cloud migrations is that because you know server does not need email addresses when you're creating users, you fall into this trap of when you start testing your migration, this is the, the, the first thing that we see. So, so as a thing that you can do today is you can go back on your, your Jira instances or, and have a look at your users. Do they have valid and unique email addresses? Very simple thing that you can have a look at now. Groups will be merged and just to ensure that project IDs can clash. So you, that's another thing that you'll need to have a look at when you're thinking about migrating across. And we can help you uh, in any of those uh, instances, whether you want to use the migration assistant or whether you need to do something else. We have ways to migrate more fully, you know, bringing app data across those types of things. Then finally, you've migrated all the content across that you've needed. Um, and now it's time to optimize. Now it's time to bring your users on board. And that would be through a, a few different things. You know, you would make sure that your user provisioning is up to scratch. And here you would start to offer the training and make sure your users understand best practice, what the applications are used for, what they are not good for, those types of things, providing that best practice approach. So going forward, you can keep your instances as healthy as possible. You know, keep up to date with the marketplace because add-ons are coming out, they're being updated all the time. And it's important to, to, to keep up to date with that information that's, that's coming across there. And you can use the community. So, you know, there's questions and answers that are being um, put out all the time. So it's another great resource that you can use once you've moved across and, and you come into things, you know, you've got questions, can I do this? How do I do this? Those types of things. <laughs>